Good morning, everyone. Today is the 7th of August, Sunday morning, and uh, we um, invite you to listen in to our morning house church service. That's what we are. We're a house church. You know, and we have, over the years, We have invited many people to participate in our house church services, Um, and for several reasons it just doesn't seem to work out. For a while we did streaming on our house church services on YouTube and Facebook simultaneously, and We kept getting interruptions during the service, people making comments. So finally we decided to stop streaming and decided to start doing conference calls. And then when we started doing conference calls, we found out that people had their own agendas when they joined the conference calls. They weren't really there to participate in worship. If they wanted to argue about doctrine, they wanted to talk about eschatology, they wanted to try to promote um, their own agenda, and that's not what, um, that's not the purpose of worship, church services, to to have conflict and stuff, so we're back to the old roots, (laughs) we're back to Rosette, Mark and Larry, and the Pineville House Church service this morning. Um, the other thing we, we have observed over the years is that uh, people don't go, uh, now I'm making a, a generalization, I know it's an overgeneralization, but um, most of the people that joined us on house church services really didn't have an interest in singing. And I find that quite interesting when people don't want to worship with the fruit of their lips. The Bible says uh, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to God. I did see on a sign in uh, Pea Ridge, Arkansas, on the Church of Christ there, they, they had that on their sign, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So there must be some people that believe in singing, and we know there are those that do believe in singing the songs, the hymns. Um, so anyway, this morning we're going to sing um, a psalm, and we're going to sing two hymns. Mark has picked out the first one we're going to sing. Um, is 229. And old school hymnal, um, 229, and it's, uh, it's about the last supper that Christ had with his disciples, and, uh, it's also about our own for um, taking of the last of them. But anyway, um, Mark, do you want to start that? Just one more time for the door of death will enter thee. They gather there to stop and share. A feasting joy is For Christ inspired John to meet in fellowship here. With those who talk with him and walk among each other here. He gave them bread and wine to live and told them when they meet. Remember me when this you sing, the milk and gorse there be. With next I meet in 
in the ship, that blood and fellowship flow. For this might be the last for me, before I onward go. Okay, the next one is 255. And this is, this is called Mixtures of Joy and Sorrow. That certainly is a description of the Christian life. Mixtures of joy and sorrow. Mixtures of joy and sorrow I daily do pass through. Sometimes I'm in the valley and sinking down the road. Sometimes I am in the on evils and I fall. I rise above my troubles and hope to reach the sky. Sometimes I'm full of doubting and think I have no grace. Sometimes I'm full of praising when Christ reveals His face. Sometimes I hope so little I think I'm growing fine. Sometimes it seems sufficient if I were all to die. Sometimes I shun that Christian lest he should talk to me. Sometimes he is the neighbor I love the most to see. Sometimes we meet together the seasons dry and dull. Sometimes we find a blessing with joy it fills my soul. Sometimes I travel morning down by the ancient stream. Sometimes my large religion appears my only thing. Sometimes when I am praying, it seems almost a path. Sometimes you receive a blessing and pray that I can have. Okay, you're going to sing a psalm out of the Psalter. Psalm 37 C. Taken from verses uh, 1 through 10 of Psalm 37. In every time, wrong one. Okay, I'll let you start that one. The little that the righteous has is more and better far, and great is on this day, who holy wicked are, for wicked are shall grow to the more the just and save, the Lord will save the perfect. Their heritage remains. They shall not be ashamed when the cries of the sea. And when the days of famine they said as far shall be. The wicked men of war so like bread of flowers away. And they shall bed in shafts they all shall fade away. The wicked far above is good. He never does repay. Whereas the righteous mercy is and freely gives away. For those who have been blessed by him inherit shall the land. And those who have been cursed by him Shall no more okay, well, we'll probably also sing a concluding hymn at the end of the message here. I just want to um, invite those that might have an interest. Uh, on Wednesday night, we're going to be having a um, service. Um, it's going to be about probably about 15 minutes. Um, 
15 to 20 minutes, and where myself and uh, Mike Orr are going to be discussing prayer this Wednesday night. And uh, we will be on a will be on a Google chat call. If you're interested in joining us, the men's fellowship. Uh, this is for men only. Uh, if you're interested in joining us for that call, um, send me an email and ask me to send you the link. And the only thing we ask is that if you do join us, this is not about contention and strife and and uh, arguing over one's eschatology or arguing over whether the Jesuits to design us to the most powerful. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about prayer <laughs> Wednesday night and the biblical uh, representations of not only Christ's prayer but uh, the exhortations given us to pray uh, is public prayer uh, found in the uh, Bible and what about private prayer? So the way you get the link is you go to LarryWPhillips.com, you go to our contact section, and you just send me an email saying, I would like a link to your Wednesday night men's prayer discussion on, um, uh, to your Wednesday night men's discussion on prayer. And I'll send you the link. Um, today, what I'd like to discuss and before I do that I want to remind everyone tonight Mark and I are continuing the Bible study that Tom Adams and I used to do and John um, Tom Adams and Tori both requested that I take them off my email list and so I have done that um, and that was because I was personally having challenges with mixed company doctrinal fellowships and Tom and Tori disagree with me on that which I respect uh, people have different views on on how much women should be involved in doctrinal discussions um, Tom's position is Aquila and Priscilla my position is, is Paul Apostle Paul and his admonition to let the women be silent in the churches and let them learn from their husbands at home. So that's what that was about. So everyone knows why Tom and Tori is no, are no longer affiliated with us in fellowship. Today I'm looking at a passage um, in um, Seventh chapter of Second Corinthians. Seventh chapter of Second Corinthians. This is uh, about sixteen verses, and I'm just going to read through the chapter. In fact, uh, why don't I do this? Why don't I let Mark read through the chapter? Can you hand this over there to Mark? I'll have Mark read these 16 verses and then I'll make some comments about it. Seventh chapter, second Corinthians, you said. Set. 17 verses you said. Having therefore these promises, dear beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting wholeness and fear of God. Receive us, we have wronged no man, we have corrupted no man, we have defrauded no man. Speak this not to condemn you. 
For I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Graze my boldness to speak toward you. Graze my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am seed joyful in all our tribulation. When we were come to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we troubled on every side with that. We were fighting in the fears. Nevertheless, God, that comforted those that are cast down, accompanied us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation or what he was comforted in you. And he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I received at the same epistle of faith, made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance, for you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us, and nothing for godly sorrow work for repentance and salvation, not to repent of. The sorrow of the world work of death. Behold the self same thing that you sorrowed after godly sword. What carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what fearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge, and all things ye have approved yourself be fair in this matter. Wherefore though I wrote unto you I did not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for the cause that set the wrong, but that our care for you and the sight of God might appear unto you. Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly the more joy we for the joy of Titus, because the Spirit was refreshed by you all. For if I have boasted anything to you of him, I am not ashamed, but as we speak all things to you in truth, even so our boasting which I made before Titus is found the truth. And his inward affection is more abundant toward you while he remembers the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling you received him. I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence in you in all things. Thank you. Okay, well, this is quite an interesting chapter. Um, you know, there was not anything distinctively different um, over the years. There has not been anything distinctively different in the Church of Christ. There is the same problems back then as there are today. Now, some issues may have changed. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot more technology today than, we, than they had in the New Testament, but that's for sure. With the computer age and microchips and smartphones and, and uh, artificial intelligence and all that, but they still were dealing with the human condition. Paul was dealing with the human condition here. And he says that he has corrupted no man and that he has defrauded no man, verse 2. And uh, I can say in, in all sincerity that I have no intention of defrauding any man or corrupting any man or woman. And I don't speak this, he says, to condemn you. And he says, great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. Now, it's not, he's not talking about in the flesh there in verse 4. He's talking about in the spirit. I do not joy in the flesh over what has happened in our fellowships over the years where we part company with people and um, you know I mean my flesh I would love to have all of those people that I mentioned yesterday or this morning on 
recently in a devotional how the, many of the people that used to fellowship with us are no longer around. I don't even, I guess some of them are still alive, <laughs> as far as I know. But it's, you know, it's their choice. Okay, it's their choice. Do you think I believe that? No. The fact that they're not fellowshipping with this is ordained by God that they're not fellowshipping with us. Okay. The fact that they re- ask us to remove, uh, that they no longer re- want to receive any of my emails is ordained by God. Okay. But he says, uh, Notice here, now this is the Apostle Paul speaking, and it's so cute. Tulip is looking up at me like she just understands everything I'm saying. Sweet little thing. (laughs) Anyway, uh, he said, when we, I'm reading from verse 5, when we were come to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. That gives me a lot of comfort. That gives me a lot of comfort, you know. I mean, uh, sometimes it's hard to go to sleep. Sometimes it's hard to rest. Sometimes uh, our mind gets to spinning and we start thinking about everything that's going on in our lives. And we just, uh, we don't know what to do sometimes. Uh, We can't get any, any rest in our flesh. And so... Paul had the same problem. What he said. He said, um, he said that uh, we had no rest. We were troubled on every side. I felt that way at times. I felt like I've been troubled on every side. All the conflict that I've had to go through all the allegations that have been made against me. You know, Carl Roberts put up over 16 videos lamb blasting me <laughs> on social media. And then he apologized and then he started doing it again, calling me a false prophet. You know, nothing would surprise me like Paul says. I mean, he says, we are troubled on every side without were fightings within were fears. Well, we don't let a lot of fightings continue very long in our fellowship. We we let people know that we do not. That's not what we're about. It's strife and contention. Now we will take a stand against what God shows us as biblical doctrine and what we believe to be held the truth. And if people oppose us and what we we believe the Bible teaches, then. Uh, like the old saying goes, the two be together, let's say, how can they, how can they, uh, fellowship together if they're in disagreement on doctrinal issues? Verse four, 6 says, nevertheless, God, uh, that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. That's what happened when Mike Orsh came on the scene, you know. Mike Orsh is a modern day Titus. When everybody else wanted to take a take a hike, my core stayed with me. Okay, I'm not exalting my core, and I don't know how long my core will be with us. Okay, but right now my core is a blessing. Okay, um, you know, you know, I'm very open about, transparent about what happened with Adiola. Adiola called me one night and started belching out a lot of lies about um, Christian psychology counseling and and how that he got more benefit from secular teachings than he did uh, in some instances the Bible and on and on and on and I rebuked him and I said that that goes totally against what I believe. I don't uphold Christian counseling. I don't uphold secular education. Okay. And so he didn't like it and so he asked me to take me he said, Take me off your email list. 
Verse 7, And not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle had made you sorry, though it were but for a season. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that any disagreements I've had with people that have come in this fellowship will be to their betterment over the long haul. I hope that the Holy Spirit of God will show Adiel where he's in error about his upholding Christian counseling and upholding secular teachings. And I, I sent him an email to that effect. I hope that my comments regarding uh, Walt Stickle and his upholding his banker as a Christian, knowing that his banker was attending an Armenian church, I hope that he'll see his error in that. I've had I've been had to repent many times over things I've said that were erroneous. Okay. Um, I hope Edward Henry will see his error in trying to put works over up and above grace in that new book that he wrote. I'm not against good works. I never have been against good works. But Edward Henry uh, wants to go on the side of works up against uh, the Apostle Paul's teachings on grace alone. Not of works, lest any man should boast as it relates to our salvation. Why am I bringing up these? Because these are all different instances that we've had to deal with in this fellowship. You know, Michael Smith, the pastor of Sovereign Grace Baptist Church, says that I need to repent, but he never told me what I needed to repent of. He told another person, Christopher Derner, and that I needed to repent. But he never approached me, he never used the biblical model of coming to me, he went behind my back and says to Christopher Derner that I need to repent. Michael, I wish you would call me up on the phone and tell me what I need to repent of. Okay? Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Yes, I, I see where we've been attacked on all sides. You know, um, I've been, uh, I guess you would say, <laughs> totally ostracized from all family members because uh, my mother told me in the last time I talked to her that she was making my brother the executor of the estate. It's just another example. Now, why would my mother tell me that she was making my brother Bradley Phillips the executor of the state? Why would she tell me that? This is my question. Why did she tell me that she was making Bradley the executor of the state? You know. Now, I'm a member of the family. I'm the oldest in the family. Okay. And I called Brad to seek clarification about the estate. And he told me to have a nice life and hung up on me. And then I found out my, my sister, Joy, had had kept all the proceeds from the life insurance policy from my mother. And I called her to get an explanation of it, and she hung up on me. Okay. And my brother, before he hung up on me, told me to have a nice life. Why am I bringing this up? Because it goes back to what it says here. That nothing has changed in the in the church. There's always going to be conflict. There's always going to be strife. And the same thing is in the families. If you don't believe me, go back to the 24th chapter in Matthew and read where it says there will, many will be offended for the gospel's sake. No, I don't think I'm right on everything. And like I still hold to the great, great teaching my dad taught me about the, the three sides to every story. There's the side that I'm going to tell, there's the side that you're going to tell, and there's the side that neither one of us are going to tell. Let's be honest about this. Anyway, uh, back to just, again, I want to read here what he says. 
in verse 5. For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side without. Every fighting within were fears. That's what I'm experiencing this morning. That's what I'm experiencing. And if I were to say anything different, I would be lying through my teeth. Okay? I'm glad that Paul wrote this. Now he says, in verse 11, For behold, the selfsame thing that you sorrowed after, godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yea, what clear, clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things ye have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. That's what we need to do. We need to make sure that our conscience are clear before God in our relationships with our family, in our relationship with people that come to us in fellowship. You know, we need to search our hearts. We need to be transparent. You know, have you all heard recently about the uh, um, the lawsuit against Alex Jones? over lying about the trying to say that the Slanza did not kill these kids, that it was all fake. You know? And now he's had to come out and admit that he was in error. He was wrong. And it's now he's been sued and, and they they've got a judgment against him for fifty million dollars for his falsity. He says, Wherefore, though I write unto you, I did it not for his cause that had done the wrong, nor for his cause that suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight might appear unto you. That's the only reason that I made an issue over the fact that I did not want to have doctrinal, I mean, very, very specific doctrinal um discussions with women being a part of those discussions. It wasn't about any one person in general. It was about women in general and about what I see in our society with women participating in doctrinal discussions. That's why I had problems with Alfred Schomp when I went to his Bible um, study and the women were taking over the Bible study. Sound, it was as if the women were in control. It was, a list, it was as if I was listening to Paula White or, or, you know, Elliot or, you know, some of the other women teachers out there. I don't believe that that is scriptural to participate in. Verse 13, Therefore we were comforted in your comfort, yea, and exceedingly more joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. Like I said, I appreciate the fact that God sent Michael Wurr along when he did to be a, a catalyst for discussion and continue edification in the Bible. For if I have boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we speak all things to you in truth, even so, our boasting which I made before Titus is found the truth. An inward affection is more abundant toward you whilst he remembered the obedience of you how with fear and trembling you received him. I rejoice therefore that I have confidence in you all, in you in all things. I'm not questioning um anyone's salvation here. I'm not I'm not questioning Walt Stickle's salvation, even though he was upholding Arminianism. I'm not God. I don't have an election meter. I can't go around zapping everyone. Okay. I don't question Tom or Tory's salvation at all. In fact I respect them both very, very much. And I still count them two of my dearest friends and I always will whether they count me that or not, even though we disagree on the point of women being actively involved in doctrinal discussions in mixed company. Um, I, I love Adiola. 
I respect Adiola in a lot of areas, but I just wholeheartedly disagree with his statements about Christian counseling and, and uh, secular things he, can, he has learned from the secular community. And I also uh, respect Edward Henry in a lot of areas. You know, I don't question Edward Henry's salvation. I never have, even though I'm sure he questions mine. Uh, Edward Henry's written a lot of good things. His book, The Antichrist Gospel, I still recommend people to read because it's a phenomenal book. And, you know, and I still recommend it in one, a couple of my books, you know. Um, but I do uh, take task, take him to heart over his teachings when he seems to present works on an equal level with grace. And that's what Paul was coming against in the book of Galatians. Okay. And I could go on and on with other people that we've had differences with, just like Paul has done here, the Apostle Paul has done. Trouble on every side. There was one time in Paul, Apostle Paul's life when he said that everyone forsook him. <laughs> I felt that way at times. I have felt that way at times. That everyone forsook him. Now, I will say that my wife has been steadfast and companion um, over the last, and we've got an anniversary coming up the 23rd of this month. We'll be 48 years together. And how she stood up with me all these years, it's only by the grace of God that we're still together. And that's all I have to say about that. Um, I appreciate the fact that Mark is still with us in the fellowship, you know. And um, But anyway, that's what's on my mind this morning. Uh, I do love each and every one of these people that I've mentioned whether they believe it or not. Um, and as it relates to Carl Roberts, um, we're, we're commanded, it appears that Carl Roberts counts me as his most vehement enemy. Okay? I am commanded to love my enemies regardless of what lies they put out about me. And Carl has put out a lot of lies about me and misconstrued what I've said and taken out of context what I've said. And he knows it. But you know what? I am commanded to love my enemies. Do good to those who persecute you and despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you. You know? And yes, I had adamant or, or very strong disagreements that, uh, with my mother. And she's now gone and uh, God rest her soul. And, uh, you know, I love my mother, but if she believed it or not, it was hard for me to come against her false doctrine when you love someone in the flesh. It's like Paul when he was talking about he wished that he was cursed for his kin's sake. That's what he said in Romans, does it not? He said that he was he wished that he was cursed for his kin's sake. You know? And, uh, you know, why is it that we have to go through these things? You know, he's, this is this is my testimony today. I want to read this and we'll conclude it with, with a hymn. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites to whom pertains the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers of the whom are concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever, amen. Okay? But he goes on and says that they which are the children of the flesh, they are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Okay, so anyway, we all have these issues in our life that we have to deal with. And I'm glad that God gives us the perseverance to continue. We don't just quit when we have a disagreement. We don't just stop. We don't just say, okay, I'm going to take my little red wagon and go home. No. We stay in the fight. You know. And so that's, 
That's my thoughts this morning. Do we have a final selection? Four hundred and seventy six. Valley of Affliction. <laughs> Very apropos for the day. Let me move this over there so you can hear. <clears throat> okay, four hundred and seventy. In the valley of affliction, of our dark may seem the day, but there's one who in our trials never stays to spy the way. Oh, the joy of thy salvation, when from sin and sorrow free, we shall sing the song of glory. To the land of Calvary, it is by grace that here we go in, wretched sinners shall we be. For it was he who in his body bore our sins upon the tree. When his spirit softly dispersed, out from death he set us free, bringing hope to the of Calvary. Gave his blood for you and me in the presence of our Father, in the shining force of God. He is making intercession while we through the journey walk with the mighty hosts of heaven, armies of the glory land, out of every tongue and nation, and jewels to the land. Oh, the joy of thy salvation, when from sin and sorrow free, we shall sing the song of glory, Christ in all eternity. Well, may the good Lord be with you today, and like I say, if there's any men out there that would like to join us for our discussion on prayer, on Wednesday night, go to LarryWPhillips.com. Go to the email contact section and send me a request for a link, and I will send it to you. God bless.